everybody. Welcome to a fall 2014 SWAT review. My name is Kate. And I'm Alan. We are from ReverseThieves.com. You can go there to get other SWAT reviews, many other podcasts, as well as three plus blog posts every week. This time we're looking at the first episode of Rage of Bahamut Genesis from MAPPA and streaming on Hulu and Funimation. This is shockingly based on a mobile card game or whatever. And apparently it's a devious one that really goes for your pocketbook. So that means they have tons of money (laughs) to spend on this animation because there are some really great sequences in this first episode. Some really dynamic shots. Even the first, there's like this chase scene in town and the two guys are on horses and they're jumping across the roof. Their fight ends up on a water wheel that's like careening down the hill as they fight on it. Yeah, it was very impressive. I mean, you could tell that the animators were having a lot of fun with it and that they had the, like, the money to, to do a lot of different things in this episode. I mean, it starts super serious with end of the world type giant battle, hundreds of warriors, and big, big, big monsters. I'm gonna guess that's Bahamut and that, uh, what do you call Spoilers, (laughs) Al! His rage will be part of this storyline and probably quelling it. It definitely, right off the bat, has a very high fantasy feel, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Then, like, a very kind of classic fantasy feel. I was thought it was interesting that the way Bahamut was animated was different than pretty much all the other characters and monsters. He was CG and it made him stand out from them. I don't know if it was like a bad standout, but it definitely made it, him feel very different than what was going on. Even the other huge summon monsters, of which one or two we see in this episode, yeah, don't look like him. But I, it is an interesting way to give him an otherworldly effect. Once we see this great city and its king destroyed, flash forward to a long time later, and there are these two bounty hunters, or at least one bounty hunter and a man very upset with said <laughs> bounty hunter. Well, he's also also a bounty hunter but he's been like thrust into it like he used to be rich but now he's poor probably because of the other guy and it seems that our red-headed protagonist is looking for his big payday in these brothers who are criminals yeah but that's just like the first mission thing i mean it's totally not the bigger plot of what's going on favaro is very silly like the series goes from very serious to having a lot of humor in it almost not quite you know slayers level like gag comedy within a fantasy setting but definitely has a lot of silly moments and facial expressions and Favreau is not like the most serious dude and he's clearly kind of a scammer because he meets this girl later on that appears in the episode and she's like, I, oh, you know, he, he's, he's showing off and telling these stories about how he's been to this like magical place. And so she's like, that's exactly where I need to go. So I'm going to like get that guy to help me. And he's like, I just made that up. But he didn't tell her that because he's like, oh, I can use this. So that's kind of the character that he is. Maybe especially because it's MAPPA that used to be a lot of Madhouse stuff. The dynamic of Fabio and Kaiser, the other guy, kind of reminds me a lot of Samurai Champloo, where you have Favaro, who's very monkey-like and kind of this boisterous sky, kind of like Mugen. And then you have Kaiser, who's very straight-laced and serious and, you know, much more technical And then you have the girl who needs to go somewhere, much like Fu. So I feel like they're kind of recreating that dynamic uh, in this show. But I mean, it's a a fairly classic dynamic, but it works fairly well for a roadshow like this. Because, you know, obviously the thing is getting to this lost magical town. And the girl obviously has a lot of surprises and it ends with a couple of surprises. One, I thought one that was very unexpected, but yeah, I thought it was a really fun fantasy series i feel like i feel like there's a lot of really garbage anime fantasy series and then there you only get like a good one every once in a while so like i have kind of high hopes for this especially considering the source material i'm sure you have like a really low expectations about it but the only thing in the whole series that feels gamey is that like when they got the bounties the bounties like turned into these sort of like card 
tablet little stone things. That was like the only thing that felt like, oh, okay, kind of out of a video game. But otherwise, I didn't get the impression. Did you, Al? No, no. Uh, I think Mappa is pretty smart in you have this fantasy land and they want this game company wants to have an anime out there to draw people into their game. So it's better to just tell a solid story in that world. And I mean, it's a pretty generic fantasy land from what I've played of the card game. So just tell a good fantasy story, of which there are a lot of, and use the the big budget that you have to uh, make it look nice. And I think a lot of video game adaptations would do well to like use this formula. Although it wasn't anywhere as good as this, Blade and Soul also kind of had that idea. I think that game, that wasn't the best anime, but it stood out mostly because it was like, ah, let's just tell a fun story in this world. And I think that's probably the best. I have not played the game, but also it's not like, I guess when I hear card game, no matter what, I think like it's Yu-Gi-Oh or something, which this definitely is not in it. See, I don't know. I mean, you've played the game out. It it seems like it's aimed at a little bit of an older crowd than like young kids. It's one of those free to play model games where the gameplay is very simple and it's all about getting the better equipment that you either basically have to grind to get and you only get it randomly or you can pay to get a better chance of getting better stuff all the time so i mean it isn't extremely complex most of the world building comes from like the flavor text on the cards that you get and but i feel like that's a fertile ground for a lot of interesting stories if you get the right team on it and uh, so far from the first episode mappa seems to be uh doing well and i feel like emiria the girl I feel like she has a slightly more active role than I think a lot of times. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, she's not going to be the escort mission of the series. Which, uh, you know, I think I appreciate because it's so... E- I mean, even as much as I love Samurai Champloo, a lot of times Fu is basically the token they have to take to the next plot point. Whereas I don't think Emiria is going to be that, especially Oh, uh, by- I think she proved that in the first episode. That uh, if anything, she might be the most useful of them all. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I am looking forward to seeing more of this one for sure. All right, see you guys next time.